Here we are, back again in our treehouse for another good time. It's almost Thanksgiving, you know that. And this is the time of the year when we get together with friends and relatives. It's a time of the year for friendship and sharing. And it's a time of the year to say thank you. Let's look over here at this long word, Thanksgiving. This part says, thanks. So I'd like to thank you for being good listeners. Thank you. This part says, giving. And today I'd like to give you something. It's a new sign with a brand new word. Look, literature. Say that with me, literature. That's what we do in our treehouse. We get together to hear stories or we get together to hear tales but we also get together to have literature. You know, we are really thankful for a lot of things. We are thankful for the pilgrims and Indians who had the very first Thanksgiving. And look what the Indians did. They shared with the pilgrims. And look over here at the pilgrims. They shared with the Indians. Come over here to my nature center where I carried in my market basket. The pilgrims had big gardens, and in their gardens, they had pumpkins. And this may be something that you've never seen before. It's a squash. And look at these. These are pretty, and they're orange and green and all different colored. Listen, they have a hard shell, and they're called gourds. The pilgrims share their corn also. Did you remember that the Indians shared deer and wild turkey with the pilgrims? And today, we are very thankful for the farmers we have who raise turkeys because we will have one for Thanksgiving. Look over there. Those are baby turkeys, and they're only three days old. Aren't they little? And look at all those turkeys. They spend their day gobbling and gobbling and wobbling and wobbling. Can you see their feeding boxes? This is a girl turkey. She is called a hen. And this is the boy turkey. He is called a tom. We are really thankful for the farmers who raise turkeys. Turkeys are big, and they're good to eat. Today, I'd like to share four characters with you. Those are the people that we're going to be reading about. I'd like you to meet Grandma. You will really like her. Thanksgiving dinner is going to be at Grandma's house, and she's doing all the cooking, and right now, she is making her favorite recipe. She likes to make cranberry bread. This is Maggie. She lives with Grandma. And this is Maggie's friend, Mr. Whiskers. His whiskers are long, aren't they? That's Mr. Horace. Grandmother invited him for dinner. She just loved the perfume he wore and his gold cane. Mr. Horace had a bakery in the city. Our story today is realistic. It really seems true. Now, I, I know you're listening, and I know you're ready. Are you sitting up tall? Good. Then we're ready to hear our story, Cranberry Thanksgiving. Listen. Today, Mr. Whiskers was helping Maggie with her work, and they soon had a armfuls of firewood. Happy Thanksgiving Day, Mr. Whiskers, Maggie smiled at her friend. That wasn't his real name, of course. His real name was Uriah Peabody. But Maggie was very fond of Mr. Whiskers. She really liked him. Her grandmother did not like him. Too many whiskers and not enough soap, 
she often said to Maggie. Mr. Whiskers indeed, <laughs> sniffed Grandmother, peeking from her kitchen window. She pulled the curtains tight again. Whenever Grandmother baked her cranberry bread, she pulled her curtains tight. The reason she did this is because her cranberry bread was the best bread for miles around. Everyone wanted her recipe, all the bakers for miles around. But Grandmother thought this should be something wonderful to leave to Maggie. She hid the recipe behind a brick in the fireplace. Oh, a lot of people would like to get this recipe, said Grandma, even Maggie's friend, Mr. Whiskers. Sketch you! She would call out the window every time he came too close to the house. But forget all that for today, for Grandmother knew she should be extra nice because it was Thanksgiving, her favorite day of the year. The cranberries had been picked, the corn pudding was made, the turkey was roasting, and the pumpkin pies were ready. The cranberry bread was cooling on the wooden board. The real work was done, and the feast was almost ready. Every year, Grandmother invited a guest for dinner and she let Maggie do the same. Friendship and sharing were important, but everybody knew that. Grandmother told Maggie that she had invited Mr. Horace, who had been staying at the town hotel. He actually bows, and he has a gold cane and smells of lavender, said Grandmother happily. Maggie said, my guest doesn't smell of lavender, she began, and he hasn't had a Thanksgiving dinner in 20 years. I invited Mr. Whiskers. Mr. Whiskers? Grandmother didn't appear to believe she had heard right. You mean here, in the house? But now there was a sound at the door, and when Grandmother opened the door, there they were, both guests, Mr. Horace and Mr. Whiskers. Mr. Whiskers held up his hands to Grandmother. Clean, he said. Oh, and where is your tie? Grandmother asked. He lifted his long whiskers. Right here, where it's always been. They sat down at the dining room table. Let's sing, we gather together, said Maggie, and they all joined in the old hymn. Maggie left the table and reappeared with the roast turkey, the corn pudding, peas, cranberry jelly, and turnips soon followed. And then came pale sweet butter and grandmother's famous cranberry bread. Well, we have all heard about your cr cranberry bread, chuckled Mr. Horace, and the <laughs> hidden recipe in the kitchen fireplace. It's in the dining room fireplace, said Grandmother, and looking over at Mr. Whiskers, she said, and you, sir, you will never find it. Mr. Whiskers stared at the turkey and pretended not to have heard her. Maggie began to get nervous, but she made sure everyone was served some of each dish, and then they began to eat. What a great full dinner that was. Everyone said, how delicious. At last, they finished dinner, and Maggie and grandmother cleared the table and went into the kitchen. Watch that whiskers, fellow, grandmother whispered to Maggie. Maggie opened the kitchen door just a small bit and peeked into the dining room. Her eyes widened. Grandmother, 
He found it. Crash. Plumpity. There was a sound of wild scuffling, loud shouts, and falling chairs. Two figures pushed to the front door. For a moment, they wrestled at the doorway. One chased the other out into the yard. The nerve of him, stealing our recipe, said Grandmother with fire in her eyes. She was angry. Maggie knew whom she meant. It wasn't Mr. Whiskers, she said. It was Mr. Horace. Mr. Horace? Grandmother looked shocked. But why? Because he owns a bakery in the city. And Mr. Whiskers knew this? Grandmother asked. Yes, said Maggie. Mr. Whiskers kindly came today to watch Mr. Horace and to have dinner. Mr. Whiskers came puffing up to the door, holding Mr. Horace by the collar. Proudly, he held the recipe high in the other hand. Don't trust a man because he smells of lavender and has a gold cane, he growled. Grandmother stood up very straight and looked hard at Mr. Horace. You, sir, she said, you are a disgrace. You are a recipe robber. Grandmother sent him away to wait on the doorstep. This time, she took Mr. Whiskers' arm into the dining room. They sat by the fireplace and ate pumpkin pie and whipped cream. Suddenly, they heard a loud wail from Mr. Horace. Oh, no! Goodness, is he still there? said Maggie. Shall we let him in? It is Thanksgiving, said Grandmother. They looked at Mr. Whiskers. Mr. Whiskers said, Maggie, open the door, and we shall give him the last piece. And to think that I almost blamed Mr. Whiskers for taking my recipe. I guess everyone can make a mistake. And to this, Mr. Whiskers smiled. Well, our realistic story had a happy ending. They all shared Thanksgiving dinner, and they all shared their dessert. Have a happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you next time for literature. Goodbye.